guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Dick Norris Buick GMC in Palm Harbor, Florida. And guess what? I have a changed up, refresh, updated midsize SUV for you. This is a 2022 GMC Acadia. We have the top trim known as the Denali. But before we get into this three row midsize SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. GMC, General Motors truck company, has been around for decades obviously stayed true to its name, building trucks for General Motors, but you know what? The industry has changed and so has GMC. Obviously with the major influx of SUVs, GMC has decided to add SUVs to their full lineup. Now, of course, they're still building the Sierra lineup. You got the Canyon as well, but this Acadia falls into that hot, hot, hot category known as the midsize three row SUV. Now for 2022, there are some changes to the outside, to the inside. They decided to drop the base SL trim. So now your gateway into the Acadia is going to be SLE. We have the Denali. And what I want to do is I want to find out, has GMC done enough for 2022 to really bring it up to par against the mighty competition? We're really going to focus on, of course, the Toyota Highlander and that top selling three row midsize SUV, the Telluride. Now what's interesting is that remember this sits on the same platform as that sister General Motors brand, Chevrolet with the Traverse. We did a walk around of that vehicle from the Chicago Auto Show. I will put that at the end of this particular one, but what I wanna know with this review is, should you be buying this Acadia Denali over say a Highlander limited or platinum trim or that mighty Kia Telluride SX Prestige. Let's dive into our 2022 Acadia Denali and find out. Right off the bat, new refresh styling right at the front end of the business. So you're gonna get updated headlight design. You'll see you get your LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, and turn singles, all nicely built into the housing. A Little bit of silver, but you know what? looking good, especially the way it kind of butts up against that Denali grill. Now, as we drop down, of course, with this being a Denali, you're going to get some bling bling, shiny chrome style trim. There is a bit of gloss black here, and I am going to zonk it because this is non-functional. They could have made this a functional side air curtain. They chose not to, but you are going to get LED fog lamps down below. And there is a bit of gloss black, Looks good sitting here brand new. Will be interesting over the years to see how that corner ages. But as we come across the front grill area, I hope that GMC gives you a pair of sunglasses, some, De some Denali sunglasses, because there's so much chrome on the front end of this thing. When the sun is out, it's gonna blind people. But you're gonna get that new style grill, like I said, all with that chrome finish. I love the GMC badge with that nice dark cherry red finish really pops from the chrome. I was kind of hoping that with the Denali trim, they would go more like a brushed aluminum look. I think that would be a lot more popular or maybe even a dark chrome finish. Wouldn't that look good, especially with our particular white Acadia? Now you do have that Denali badge that's been stamped on the driver's side corner here to let people know that you went all the way for the top trim and working your way down, you do have some functionality here, that gloss black with more of that chrome finish along the bottom. Now, as we get up onto the hood, I do like the way the hood fits nicely with the grill area. You're gonna get some nice indentations, bold styling, nothing too crazy though, which is really great. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? We do have some updated wheels. So on the Denali trim, you're gonna get this 20 inch wheel, metallic gray finish, machined aluminum. All the little intricate details really add up to a nice, clean, big picture on this GMC Acadia. And I think one of my favorite things is guess what? No flat black. So like some of the other brands, even on their top trims, they have flat black around the fender openings. On the Denali, you get white on the fender and also that nice fender flare. And another thing to point out is that GMC does have a unique style to their fender openings. Google it, look at all the history. It's that same general shape. Now, going down the rest of the vehicle on the mirror caps, you are gonna get, of course, that color match paint. 
LED turn signals with a little bit of shiny silver finish. You are gonna get bright shiny metalwork top and bottom, some gloss black in the center, and then on the door handles, I like the way they did the style. You do have body color match paint, but then you're also gonna have some chrome style finish around the door handles. This is for the Denali trim, like I said, bring your sunglasses for this particular one. Down below, just a little splattering of some more shiny chrome with the Denali badge stamped in there. Looking great. I like the way it curves underneath. And they went painted for most of it, except for just a little bit of flat black. That's okay because that's so low down there, you're hardly gonna notice it and it's gonna take a better beating. Working our way down the side, you do have the raised roof rails, which obviously will come in very handy if you're gonna go on those family trips or adventures. It's a combination of flat black with some brushed aluminum style to it. From the side, besides the wheels, 2022, this is the basic silhouette as the 2021 model. So don't think that they did a major refresh. This is a mild refresh front and rear. Coming towards the rear though, you're gonna have this nice large quarter window. And then I really like the way it blends in so cleanly with the rear glass because of this blacked out rear pillar area. And then tail lights, very unique to GMC, LED looking great with the chrome across the top portion, that GMC badge, they do have the wiper. I get it though, because they have a very, very stubby low roof spoiler here. I wish they would extend this off a little bit. I, I think it would help with the style and also with the arrow and maybe get this tucked in out of there. But we are actually, we're not gonna zonk this, we're actually gonna zonk the stubby rear spoiler. Just extend it a little bit further, nothing crazy. Working your way down, of course, you're gonna get the Acadia badge, that Denali stamped in the center there and working all the way down. What I do like is you're gonna get functional exhaust tips on both sides, nice stainless steel appearance to them. Yeah, they sort of look a little like a vacuum cleaner nozzle, but they do fit very cleanly with this lower bumper area. And then of course you are gonna get tow capability that you hide with this cover on the back. But why don't we pop the hood and see what's powering our Acadia Denali. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a hydraulic hood strut. Now they did get rid of the naturally aspirated four cylinder engine for 2022. So that means you're gonna have two engine choices. And this is one of the two. Underneath the hood, you do have that turbocharged inline four power plant. So what are we looking at underneath that simple but tasteful engine cover? You're looking at a two liter turbocharged inline four 228 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. So thank you, GMC. No CVTs to worry about, which remember, some of the competition, they do have CVTs. Now, with that 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, you are gonna be able to go zero to 60 in about 7.7 .7 seconds. That's a little quicker than the naturally aspirated four that they dropped. That was around 8.8 .8 seconds. Top speed, around 115 miles an hour. MPGs, 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, and the vehicle weighs 4,240 pounds. I guess my one zonk is, is that if you're gonna go Denali, which is their top trim, it should come with the naturally aspirated V6 automatically. The V6 is available, but it is an additional option. But while we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what big things are in store for 2022. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 GMC Acadia Denali. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, midsize segment is on fire. There are so many to choose from. I can't make up my mind. I am liking what this Acadia brings to the table, but I'm curious, what's the price? Because we're comparing it to the Highlander, we're comparing it to the Telluride and the rest of the bunch. MSRP for the way that this Denali is option, front wheel drive with that two liter inline four turbocharged engine and all the other fixings, you're looking at an MSRP of $49,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now, the nice thing is you're getting soft touch material up top, love the contrast stitching, and then you're gonna get this dark wood finish. I wish they would have went with a black wood instead of a brown, but at least there's no gloss black on the door panel to get pesky fingerprints all over. Door pocket is on the smaller side, so maybe a hot dog from 7-Eleven and a bottle of Jolt Cola to keep you awake. We do have the optional 
Bose sound system, which is a nice touch in the Denali. But going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. Soft material, stitch work looks great. I don't mind the wood too much because it doesn't have a veneer finish on it. So it's a nice flat wood. And then I do also think that they did a great job with this uh, darker silver finish. Nothing too shiny or blingy in here, which I'm okay with. Now, when we get to the infotainment side of things, this is where it gets a little wonky. And the reason why is, is that they just have not had a major redesign in a few years. Now, the infotainment system screen is going to be smallest compared to the competition. It is an 8-inch screen. You do have navigation, but the great news is you have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. And my favorite thing about GM products, especially this Acadia Denali, watch the backup camera. Super clear. You can watch Radies rides on that while you're backing up. That's how clear it is with trajectory. So you are going to have that great work. You do, like I said, have the navigation there. And another thing that I like about their system is that it's very intuitive, very easy to use. You can get your climate control. But if you want more tech, the competition, especially the Telluride, brings a little bit more tech. Only one fake button in the center here. I guess this used to be for when oil slick was uh, was legal to use on vehicles or an ejector seat. But that's the only fake button that they have. You do have your dual climate control, which there's a assortment of knobs. Plus, you could go through the screen if you don't want to do the knob thing. And if you don't like the touch screen, then you can use the knobs. This is the one thing that seems a little bit J.C. Whitney catalog is how they implemented that push-pull system for the tra operating the transmission, that nine speed. So you're going to push for park, push for neutral, and then pull for drive, pull for reverse. Not my favorite setup, especially the way it kind of, like I said, it looks like it's been aftermarket added in here. Once you get the hang of it, it's not a problem to operate. It just doesn't look so clean in this Acadia. Now, you do have wireless charging, and they did take care of you. USB-C, USB, and a 12 volt, which is great. Close that up. And then new for 2022, look at our pass-through. We have an uh, area large enough for a full box of Twinkies. You could actually put a couple boxes in there for those longer family road trips, but it's nice to have that flexibility. You could also put a purse, a purse, a bag, a satchel, a sack. You could even put a five-pound bag of apples there. Maybe you might have to eat one because it might be hanging over the edge, but you got that flexibility and room. Two cup holders. Let me show you the key fob. There's your standard GMC key fob. Would be nice to have it say Denali on it. That would have been a nice touch. Flip it around. You do have remote start. Pop the rear hatch area. Play your red horn. And then there's more of that wood finish. And the great news is on the Denali trim, you do get ventilated seats, heated seats, and then you have your mode selector knob, which I'll show you more about that when you come over to the business end. Nice high with the soft material. You got your auxiliary Twinkie holder there. Great stitching. Open it up. How much room do we have? Enough for a 10 pound bag of Twizzlers. Drop it in there, close it up. Seats, clean styling, nothing too fancy, but you got the Denali embroidery up top. I like the contrast stitching. The piping really brings the seat alive. And then you're gonna have electric assist for the passenger and for the driver. And you do have what GMC calls the Skyscape sunroof. Now let me show you one thing that I am gonna zonk is this. You could only have it open or closed. There's no in-between. So I guess if you want to drive around like this, you can have it halfway open. And the reason why they call it a skyscape is when we get to the mid-row, there is a separate small sunroof area for those passengers back there. But why don't you come over to the business end? I want to show you behind the leather-wrapped steering wheel of this GMC Acadia. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel of this 2022 Acadia. You do have two memory seat settings. There's all your controls for those seats, easy to get to with the lower lumbar. I'm six feet tall, I got plenty of room in here. And it's interesting because if you look at the competition, some of them may appear to be larger on the outside, but the way that they have the interior, it, it winds up being a little bit of a squeeze play. The way they have this set up really allows the space, but also I feel secure in here, which feels good. Steering wheel, they didn't do much to it. The horn button I don't mind because I like with the GMC Denali, they put the grill shape there. That's a nice touch, but this steering wheel is as old as a Nintendo Game Boy. You have those rubber buttons, 
which don't show fingerprints, but they're just very, very dated. I do like the leather though, super soft, and it is tilting and telescoping steering wheel and a heated steering wheel on top of that. The dash though is my favorite. I like the analog tech, analog coolant and fuel gauge, and then you're gonna get a plethora of digital uh, displays in there. Very, very easy to use, and you could scroll through a cornucopia of information. And then you do have that mode selector switch. So right now, we're in normal. If you switch it to your next level, you'll get snow mode. And then obviously, we gotta go all the way. The green flag means go, and it also means sport mode. I think the other top thing that GM does a great job with is the head-up display. It's got the tachometer, your speedometer, your gear indicator, and it's clear as day. Nice large size and adjustable, but why don't we get to the mid-row and see how your passengers are gonna like this Acadia Denali. All right guys, mid-row time. Now one thing I wanna showcase is if you look at the door panel for the passengers in the back, they have a different door panel with more storage, which I like to see. You have a nice area to put some Three Musketeers. Up top, you can fill that cup holder up, either with a drink or put some applesauce, maybe some yogurt, just dump it right in there with a spoon and just spoon it away while you're going on your next family journey. Just make sure you have a nice big roll of paper towels to clean up the mess. But the great news is nice soft leather seats, just like up front, leather goes all the way around the back. You got a good size pocket, put maybe a travel size game of Monopoly in there. One of my favorites, Battleship. That's always an, another one or even Connect Four. Love to play that game. You do have a little command center here. The great news is you have your AC controls. The bad news is you just have heated seats. And the reason why that's bad is because if you look at like the Telluride, at this price point, you could get ventilated mid-row seats. The great news though is look at this, home power source, USB-C, USB, and then what is this? Boom, look at that. If you ate all the Twinkies, if they're all gone, you could keep two just for you and your friend in that mid-row. You could even put two more up top with two cup holders, maybe some hot chocolate you could put in there. You could dip your Twinkie in some hot chocolate. That sounds interesting right about now, especially since it's about 90 degrees in Florida. But you do have your AC vents up top. Like I said, the Skyscape sunroof. So we have the same sunroof as up front. What's the zonk? Tell me. Yes, you in the back eating that blimpy sub stuff in your face. Yes, you're right. Close open, no in-between. You're literally gonna have to dip your Twinkie and eat it holding this up if you just want half the sun and not all the sun. The great news though about the seats, look at this. They slide and they slide really, really well. Do they recline? Yes, they do. And they are captain's chairs. The problem is the Zonk is that they're too thin. Give me a little bit more meat for the muscle of the arm. That would have been nice. But well, while we go ahead, let's get to that third row, that pesky third row, and see how much room you have in the Acadia Denali. Help! Where's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides? He is in the third row. So we want to showcase the third row in this Acadia Denali, and surprisingly, not too shabby. Remember, I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of headroom. You do have rear AC. And if you notice, my knees aren't too high. I could actually go for a pretty long distance. And I do like the way there's no center area. So I could kind of, you know, take my legs and either extend one or two of them out, which is gonna make it a little bit more comfortable. There is a USB on the driver's side. We're gonna have Lori show you that when we get to the cargo area. So you do have connectivity back here and you got cup holders and a place for some Skittles while you're looking out of your Skyscape sunroof. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into that trunk area, that cargo area and see how much we could haul in the Acadia Denali. All right guys, cargo area time, real simple. You just reach underneath, hit the button. You have nice electric assist. It moves at a actual pretty good pace. And then I wanted to leave the third row up for you and showcase how much room that you have. Now, this being a mid-sized three row SUV, you'd be quite surprised how much room you could get out of these SUVs that are this size. But you're basically looking at 12.8 cubic feet of space with the third row up. So if you're comparing this to the Highlander or the Telluride, it does come up a little short. Now, if you put down all the rows, that is gonna maximize at 79 cubic feet of space. Let's see how you put the seats down. It's actually real simple. You're just gonna pull and drop, pull and drop. 
Now you can see what it looks like with that third row down. You do have that USB that I talked about in the third row on the driver's side, which is nice to have. And then you do have some cup holders and a little Skittles tray, which is also a nice touch. Now, if you're gonna do any tailgating or go to the beach, you do have a 12 volt conveniently placed. And then another nice thing that I like about the Acadia is you pull this up. This is perfect for putting any kind of like beach sandals, things that are real sandy, drop them in here and then you could just vacuum it out very, very quickly. To put the seats down, that mid row, it's really, really simple. You're just gonna pull the handle on this side and look at that, boom, there's your almost 80 cubic feet of space. I know Lori right now has her mind blown just how easy that was to go down and it's nice and flat. That's another nice thing that I always like to point out. It's super flat. If you ever get kicked out of your house, get yourself an air mattress and you could just inflate it and have it sitting back there. But you know what? If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle and see how this Acadia Denali drives. All right, guys, we're in the 2022 GMC Acadia Denali, pulling away from Dick Norris Buick GMC. You do have, like I said, that electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel to really get it perfect where you want to have it. The leather is absolutely divine to touch. I just wish the steering wheel had a little bit more newer style to it. Getting to the infotainment system is well within reach. You have that wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is really nice. And then I even love the eight inch digital display that they give you in the center here, where you could scroll through a whole bunch of information. Plus you have some analog touches as well. Now, when you go Acadia Denali, you're getting that extra sound deadening material, the thicker glass, acoustic glass, which is gonna help cut down on the exterior noise coming into the interior. And they definitely do a bang up job. Head up display is great. I wish what would come standard is a digital rear view mirror. That's another nice piece of technology that GM started instituting into their vehicles. And it's such a clear view that it's even better than looking out the regular mirror. But visibility is great. Very comfortable with the way that the uh, dampers, all four corners have been tuned. Yeah, I do wish the infotainment system was larger, but like I said, it's very, very easy to, to use. Size sometimes doesn't always matter. And I know for many of you who are sick and tired of floating iPad style screens, it's nice to have something just integrated very, very cleanly into the dash area. Now, once the light turns green, we are gonna do some on throttle. I do have it in sport mode. Remember, this is front wheel drive. You can get all wheel drive on throttle. Here we go. Actually, very, very responsive from that smaller two liter inline four turbocharged engine. I'm very, very impressed. You're not really waiting for the boost to come around. It kicks in and you are off and running. I personally would go with the naturally aspirated V6, but boy, oh boy, that definitely was very, very surprising. Obviously, like I said, it's one of those things that when the redesign comes for this Acadia, that's gonna bring it truly to the next level. But the seats are comfy, very supportive. I'm glad that they're ventilated and heated and you have that flexibility of having that third row and you don't have to go full-size SUV. Remember, the Yukon is your full-size SUV. I think one of the things that I like about this Acadia is just how easy it is to drive. You don't feel like you're in a larger SUV, which is nice when it comes to the exterior dimensions. Mirror size is great. And it's just really, really smooth. Very, very smooth quiet, comfortable driving SUV. And I think that's where GMC just checks off all the boxes with this Acadia. And it's definitely gonna make your daily commute that much more enjoyable. Steering is nice and light, even in sport mode. So if you don't want heavy steering, you don't have to worry about it with this uh, GMC Acadia. And you know, you are of course gonna get all the safety features, the blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, emergency brake, the whole nine yards. And you get the nine speed automatic, no CVTs, which is wonderful as well. 
But hopefully this gave you a good overall feel of what the Acadia is about. We're going to uh, try one more time to do a little bit on throttle up this hill over here. Let's see how it actually drives over the ripped up pavement. Look at that, just soaks up all the bumps. Very, very nice, very smooth. On throttle, here we go, up the hill. I'm telling you, it's for a four-cylinder turbocharged engine, it actually has a decent amount of power to it. I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. And the way the nine-speed shifts, very, very smooth, very clean. And then over the bumps and, and uh, ripped up pavement, it just absorbs everything. So uh, I think that's where you're gonna be really delighted with this Acadia, especially the Denali trim. But hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of what this vehicle is all about. We're going to get back to Dick Norris Buick GMC and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split all second. Right guys, another great day here at Dick Norris Buick GMC. I definitely got to thank Adam Norris, Melvin, and the rest of the crew for getting us access to their very, very first 22 Acadia Denali. Some changes like we pointed out. Let me know what you think about those changes in the comment section. Is this the mid-size three-row SUV to get over a Highlander or a Kia Telluride. Definitely some high points, but I wanna know what you think. Put it in that comment section. If you wanna keep seeing mid-size SUVs on Radies Rides, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the first link, become a Radies Rides Patreon member. Click the second link in the description, get yourself some Radies Rides merch. Got to give it up to the coolest cat, the muscle behind the camera. Show Lori some love in that comment section. Thank you, Lori, for your hard work and all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.